Uh, this is Ed Cohen. I'm in San Diego, California, and our special guest today is in Orlando, Florida, Simon T. Bailey, uh, an author, in fact, a genius author, uh, not according to me, but to others who have known him over the years. Uh, I'm going to read this so I don't screw up. Worldwide keynote speaker, former Disney leader, that's Disney Institute, seven-time best-selling author and executive coach to more than 2,000 companies declares that this is the age of the woman. And he shows men how to step up, fulfill a role in sparking themselves and the women in their lives for everyone's betterment. Now, that sounds pretty altruistic, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's welcome uh, Simon Bailey. Thank you, sir, for being on this show, Global TV Talk Show. Thank you. Edwin, it's good to be with you. So you did a video. I'm reading this. It says the launch of a movement from a three-minute video. I can't do anything in three minutes. God, what can you do? That went viral to 90 million. Okay, so how do you? what did you say in three minutes? I haven't seen it. But what did you say in three minutes that captured the imagination and became viral? I, I, don't, I, I don't get it. Tell me. My daughter came into my home office one day, I was in between trips, and she said, hi, daddy. I said, hi, baby girl. And I said she wanted to talk, but I was emotionally unavailable. So she said, daddy, I see you're busy. I'll just come back later. And it hit me on the plane that I missed the moment to connect with my daughter. And when I came back home, her mother said to me, you give everybody the best of you, but you give us the rest of you. And I don't want the Ooh. leftovers anymore. <laughs> That's a quote. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So what I realized, Edwin, is that I had built a house but lost a home. I was chasing money but had no meaning. And I was pursuing power, but I had no purpose because it was all about the next thing. And so after 25 years of being married, I went through a divorce. Well, I've had a couple. So I understand. Um, but your story is, uh, from what you've just said, is um well let me ask you an audience you can tell this is not rehearsed <laughs> but did you reconnect with your daughter oh totally she she's older now she's in college and absolutely and i, I don't know if it's divorced dad guilt but <laughs> i've been doing the work i went to therapy and my therapist anita really helped me understand how to build a bridge with both my daughter and son wow I'm glad to hear that. So um, ignite the power of women in your life, a guide for men. So this means that men are sexist and well, women are sexist too, right? <laughs> yeah, you could say that. I think I call it a guide for men because the last thing a guy wants to hear is some guy telling him what to do. I just share my story of failure and how when I went to therapy, my therapist said, whatever you don't deal with, will eventually deal with you. And it was a wake up call because I had high ego, control freak, always had to be the smartest person in the room. And what she invited me to do was to take the mask off and do the work. Uh, she said there was a lot of research about dads and daughters. There was emerging research about mothers and sons. And she said, you've been mothered to death and it's now showing up in how you do what you do. So I started the work. So let's back up a little bit. Mother to death led to your being what every guy has been taught to do is strive, strive, strive. And then yeah. everything will maybe take care of itself. But that ain't true now, is it? No, yeah. no. And I was chasing things, but I, I was totally disconnected from my then spouse. And that kind of spilled over to my disconnection with my children. Um. This, so if I may ask, uh, did, did you find, uh, did you take a chance and, you know, connect with another woman? I did. I got remarried. And uh, so you, you learn from. The, the oh, parents. totally. <laughs> well, totally. Uh, well, well, she's probably lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fortunate as well. Yeah. <laughs> So what did you do at Disney Institute? That, that's like a college kind of a thing, isn't it? 
Yeah, so Disney Institute is the external training arm of Disney. Corporations come to learn how does Disney get 64,000 people on the same page all singing it's a small world after all. Uh, so uh, yeah, I had a chance to, to be a part of the leadership team there, a great honor. So to what extent is that process of achieving that kind of business success relevant to what is in your book? Yeah, yeah, great question. So as my former wife, mother of my children would say, you work so hard at Disney, I thought that Walt had come out of the grave and hired you personally <laughs> because I was just all in. But then I brought that behavior and thinking home. I'm in charge. Do what I say. Because I had a team of people responsible for PL, and I thought I was big man on campus. And she said, you don't take out the trash. Like, you know, we're just talking basic things here. And what I recognized, I had shut down in my communication with her because if I didn't get my way or things didn't go the way I thought they should go, then how I would punish her was to stop talking, which was wrong and unhealthy. And my therapist pointed it out. So what I recognized there was behavior from work that was spilling over into my home life. Yeah, well, I, I, I get it. Personally, I get it, yeah. So um, I'm gonna read this. Um, so I'd like you to comment on that. The, the challenges that men are uh, going through as roles are shifting and world economies thrust men into unknown territory. Yeah, so right now with everything happening in the world, men are trying to find where do I fit? Our masculine values of dominance, you know, suppress emotions, take charge, is that still relevant? And the answer is yes and no. As the world evolves, how do we come alongside women and understand they can help us evolve and grow into what's emerging in the world. The rise of women and the insurable uncertainty that has impacted their world, the rise of women. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, so they're doing the same. How, how are they doing things differently than, than we do? Yeah, so it's interesting you ask that question because the struggle that women are having is that in order for them to take power, they have to act like men. Hmm. And that's disingenuous and that's not correct. Women need to be women, but uh, they don't have to fit into the old boys club to be accepted. They need to be who they are and bring their opinions to the table. And then men have to be open enough to say, that's a great idea, tell me more. Yeah. So how are they different from when we were uh, just out of college? <laughs> I think what's different is with <laughs> command and control. Number one, command and control. Do as I say. Uh, we would take care of guys, would take care of each other, and we would lock women out, right? Where it's now changed, as you know, there are more women in college than men. Mm. where it's evolving pretty soon, women are going to be elbowing um, folks out of the white collar jobs, right? Especially in, in medical yeah. and, uh, and law. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's the real money leadership. Yes. So we men, we're not in those dominant leadership roles that we had 25, 30 years ago. Mm. It's now women. And we need to recognize that and not be threatened by it, but see it as an opportunity where we grow together. So there's another bullet point here that that's, jumps out. It's not in yellow and red here, but maybe it should be. And it says, so I'm gonna read this, okay? The realities of online dating today for a man who seeks an equity partner. Well, you know, that's a lot of words. What does that mean? <laughs> a partner who can meet you where you are. Uh, you know, she doesn't necessarily have to be a nurse with a purse. Uh, she just <laughs> understands that, you know what, women have their own money, they have their own house, they have their own assets, okay? Guys, you know, if you've been through a marriage or two, you've got your own stuff. How do you come together? And it's not about you one-upping me, but how do we come together and leverage each other and find a third door to walk through for who we yeah. become in the process? <laughs> That's really a hard thing, but those are the right words. <laughs> right? 
So then I'm going to read more. Okay, no strings attached. Yeah. So when you love, no, I mean that's how it should be, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, love desires to give at the expense of self. So when you truly love someone, it's not but about what I can get from you. It's about what I can give to you. And if you meet somebody online and you say, you know what, this is not going to go anywhere. It's okay. You just don't ghost them like I did, but you respectfully say, you know what, this is not going to work for me. I wish you well in life. So, um, but that's not the same as no fault. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting way to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing with you. Spont I know. <laughs> spon spontaneous bull <laughs> bullshit here. I don't know. So, um, the music of the soul. Yeah. That sounds like the music of the night from <laughs> Phantom or something. Right? Every woman has a rhythm. She has a tune. And when a guy dials into the music of her soul, you may be into hip hop, rap, R&B, where she wants a little Beethoven. And you've got to understand how to do the tango with her to tap into the rhythm of the music of her soul. Right, yeah. well, so you won't get there. Yeah. You won't get there because yeah. you, you know, you're out of tune. And when you tune into the frequency of where she is, you understand that the same letters that spell the word listen spell the word silent. Ooh, wow. <laughs> that's a good one. So that's the uh, ignition key that you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. You can give a woman a, a sentence. She will give you a paragraph. <laughs> and, and it's understanding how she is wired because women emote. So how do we begin to dial into that emotion and really connect? Um, okay, I wanna go on here. You have some other um, brilliant pieces here. <laughs> uh, and I, I don't wanna uh, um, mess you up by taking them out of order. Um, so again, ignite the power of women in your life, a guide for men. And, um, is there a sequel? Is there a chapter two? Believe it or not, we actually created a one-year success plan free of charge for men to do the work in a six-week e-course that complements the book. Wow. It, yeah, That's it's all cool. at ignitethepowerofwomen.com. All right. And, and um, how do people, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, I didn't write down your website here. Uh, it's a wonderful cover, book cover. It's great. Um, and uh, we're going to show it. Let's see if it shows here. Yeah, look at that. That's great. Great. That's the book cover. Okay. And um, what is your daughter doing now? So Madison is a junior at Rollins College in Winter Park, Florida, mm -hmm. communications major, and it's just on fire. And it's so interesting you would ask that question because I just wrote her a little note, her and her brother. Uh, I tend to write in notes, uh, just spontaneous, just something that they will hold on to. And one day when they get married and have children, perhaps they'll share some of the notes that I wrote to them. Okay, you don't want to share anything. Do you? <laughs> you know what I did? No, I'll be happy to share. So, so I wrote her a note and I said, you are, and I took all 26 letters of the alphabet and oh, I told her that exactly is cool. how I see her as her dad. So you're awesome. You're beautiful. You're cool. You're delightful. So at any moment, uh, when I'm not around, she can look at that card and what it really is, Edwin, it's my way of hugging her with my words. So let's go back in time now, okay? Um, this just jumped out at me. I didn't see it earlier, but I just see it right now. Um, the means to think about the power of the imprint of your father. Okay, yeah. so. Yeah. yeah, so my father, 
was an immigrant to this wonderful country, the United States, 60 years ago, picked oranges in Mount Dora, Florida. Fast forwarding, my father never told me that he loved me. And I never told my children initially. And my then wife, mother of my children said, you need to do something about that. So when I'm talking to my dad one day, and he said, I put food on the table, clothes on your back, shelter over your head. That was my way of saying that I loved you. But I said, dad, I needed to hear you say it. And finally on his deathbed, and when he says, I love you, and, and it did something for me and my brothers. And all of a sudden, um, I tell my children that I love them. And I didn't think they needed it, but I needed it. And the moment I said it to them, I realized they needed it. So the imprint of, of a father, critically important. You think about a woman you're dating. What was her relationship with her dad? Because the first guy she learned to love was her dad, if he was there or not there. So you got to unpack that and understand that because it will show up. So this is brilliant. Okay, so what is your website? IgniteThePowerOfWomen.com Okay, folks, you all heard that. Now, I see you on the cover of the Wheaties box back there. <laughs> so that, that was, <laughs> that means strength, right? <laughs> but, but, not, but not mental strength? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I did some work for General Mills, and uh, as the board of the CEO, they sent that to me as a gift, so. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Well, please come back and maybe you join Philip and we'll get some kind of a conversation going. Yes. Uh, this is great. Thank you very much for being on Global TV Talk Show. I love this. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye now. This is Ed in San Diego. And that is Simon T. Bailey in Orlando. That's a wonderful story. Thanks for sharing it.